Hello, bonjour. Today, I want to show you some brushes that I published last month. It's the one you can see right now on your screen, the two columns, and you will find them in the link into the description. It's free, it's public domain packages, and it's for Krita, obviously. This video will not be about the install instruction or about uh, uh, how I put them like this in two columns. You will find all this information into the blog post in the link into the description. So let's jump directly to how I use them. It's probably a good idea to start this video with the drawing tools. And the drawing tools in this brush pack are the two in blue. So I have like a pencil and like a mechanical pencil here. Uh, I use these two tools also in combination with the two eraser on the top here. So how I use them? For example, the pencil will be a little bit more blurry. So I'm using it usually, if I select the right layer, to define the big shapes. So let's put some bat wings to this character here. And then this way I just design the main volume or the main gesture. And then I will use the mechanical pencil one just on the top just to add a little bit of contrast for darkening the line and also when I have a better idea of like little texture for the line or little expressivity I don't know if it's a right word but maybe you can understand it by by the root of the word expressiveness. When I need to erase, I will just pick this one, the first eraser. And it has an interesting shape that reminds me that this is an eraser. Um, recently in Krita, you have some option in the settings to just display a little icon of eraser, but the one you can see near the center of my eraser but it's also a good reminder to have a different shape for the eraser so you know that you erase at this moment and not draw it's more obvious when i use a shortcut to switch between the mechanical brush and this one so i will select the mechanical brush and if i use my shortcut you can see that I can erase and redo the line as I want. Um, if you want to know how I put this shortcut, it's related to the tools, script, 10 brushes. And I put the W key on mine to use the this eraser. And then you have to go to configure Krita keyboard shortcut and type brush and you will find here all your 10 brushes script with all the slot of your preset so for example the 9 one is the W so I set here the, the key W and this way I can toggle switch between an eraser and my brush I will probably do later a video about how to set up this dedicated to Eraser in Krita because this is a big topic. Anyway, the other Eraser is a soft one. So this one I use it more like when I need to just lower the opacity of a shape and pick the mechanical pencil just to just do some iteration. For example, if I want to keep the same shape but just add some little more pointy pattern on the top sometimes it's good to just keep something and redo it a little bit better on the top so this way i can have like a sort of guideline and not erase it totally like the first eraser would erase under the drawing tools here you will find a big category for all the painting tools and I want to underline here 
especially the green one and the blue one. So at first let's rewind a little bit this artwork to a preview state. Or maybe like that. So you can see here that I have a lot of texture and I have a lot of uh, brush strokes that the only goal of them is to fit the canvas and give some expression to, to my brush style. And it's a mix of the green one and the blue one. The blue one are the ones that are really extreme. And for example, this one will only manage the canvas type texture like this that I can plug everywhere. But I will you will find on the green one, the last one here, that can get exactly the same type of canvas but with a little bit of more control because now I can paint. So the blue one will be more like a pattern and the green one will be to paint. You will find also a brush like this that can make some hue variation and with this hue variation you can fit the canvas to make some more interesting pattern here and there. So that's why there is a little checkbox like this in red and white in the corner. It's just to indicate it's more like a pattern. But I use them very often, you see, if I want to simulate the, the wall is dirty here, this is good. If I want to make a big stain on this wall, I probably select this one and you can see that I can make something a bit more random without a lot of control. And of course some splatters and with little drops. It's a classic. On the green family, you'll find some more control. And maybe the main one is this one with two arrows here. And this is a brush with tilt. So if your brush is constantly vertical on your tablet, maybe it's because Krita doesn't support tilt with your tablet. Uh, or your tablet hardware doesn't support tilt at all. Uh, mine is an Intuos Pro Large right now and it supports the tilt. So uh, if I move my wrist into this position, you can see that I can obtain an angle and I can obtain another angle here this way or this way. So this is good for getting some control. And I can show how I use that this brush into another illustration. So I will plug here, open in a new document. So same here, you can see, I will put a layer on the top that I use that this type of brush just to paint like this, the the edge of the building, like that. So you will find some other brush that I use frequently, like this one, the green one. It's a small rake that you can see here on the fold of uh, her shirt. You will find Maybe this one, especially if I rewind this artwork to a previous state, yes, you will find the same type of brushes used for doing this big stroke here. There is some parts here that are grainy, you can see a little grain, and this will be managed by some other brush in this area. So probably this one. Or probably just a texture like this one, random noise. Yeah, maybe more this. 
and above the green one you have the like greeny bluish <laughs> I tried to make them like part of the same family but at the same time you can see there is a difference and on this one you will find also some grain so this part of the brush I call them glazing because you can just overlay the color over something existing like for example here you can see that I overlay a little bit of orange over this but I preserve the shape of the door If you select this green, you will get more like a scrub effect where there is some transparency, but it's due to some little holes. So I will pick a little brush to show an arrow. Some little holes that are inside the brush, and this is what will make some sort of transparency in the distance. But these brush are a lot more opaque than the one of the top. All the one on the top are one that you can just overlay at low opacity to get some interesting effect. So that's all for the bluish greenish and the blue at the end. You can obtain a lot of effect with them. Right in the middle of the blue one and the green one, you will find some utility brush, two of them. One is the shape tool, and this one, I'm using it nowadays mostly just to design quickly when I do storyboards, some speech bubble. They are not perfect, just I retrace them in vector later, but it's good just to, to get a quick prototyping like this. And I can also take the rectangular tools and do some rectangles. Sometimes I use that for presentation when I write some text on the top and reduce the opacity. Well, you get the, the idea. And the other one is the move tool. And I show it many usage of it when I color, but I use it mainly when I have a line art. So. This artwork is probably not ideal to show this, but when I have a black line art like this, and I have a color that is not really under the line art, because I paint the color very fast, I'm using this tool just to move a little bit, just to shake and adapt the coloring under the, under the line art perfectly. So this is just little too convenient tool here. Right above the utility tools, I have the four for the wet stuff. And I have only one tool that does a little bit of smudging and painting at the same time. And it has a pink stroke in it. So this tool is the one that I use to paint all this artwork. So it will be easy just to show all the stroke here are just made with this type of tool. If I take a brighter color, it will be easier to demonstrate. But you get the idea. The three other brushes with um, white stroke on them are just here to smudge. They don't paint. You can select the color you want. It will not be influenced. That's why I put a white stroke on them. And this one uh, dot this type of effect you can see here so it's when I want to break an edge of a shape just to make it a little bit or more dynamic or more well definited so for example if I want to make some type of movement here I will use that or if I want to make the hair a little bit more blurry it's a very effective tool for that uh, this one uh, it's symbolized by a little brush does exactly the same effect but with less expression so you have something a little bit softer it's when you don't want to see all this little bristol of the brush but you will still want to see a little bit 
and now you get the logic. This one goes a little bit more extreme and it sort of dilute the area. So I have here a random movement that make that make like if you rub the canvas with some water. And so you have sort of little diffusion here happening. I use it on the clouds and on every part that I need this type of uh, very smooth sort of transition between the colors. The brushes in red here are the one to detail and I have a specialized pack of detailing brush that you can use also for drawing. They are totally good also for that. But because if I use this brush here and reduce the size of them, they just start to not behave the same. Uh, Krita is very special at scaling at a lower size the brushes. I, I find they lose a lot of expression and a lot of opacity. So that's why I'm using specialized brushes to put my details. And you will see that on this artwork, it's the type of brush that I use for making all this little stroke here and there. So you have the first one that is like a pencil and this one will make some very soft details. And this is typically the, the type of detail you can see here on the skirt of pepper. I don't want this type of detail to just pop too much. And I use this type of brush also, you can see, to, to detail some facial expression. Or if I want to make her blush, I will use this type of uh, brush. For the harder detail like this, with pointy shapes, I will use probably a brush like that. Yeah, it looks really like if it this brush at work and the other brush are just similar this one maybe has a little bit more opacity so I can just put this and you can see make some opacity and some detail at the same time I probably when I see the transparency of these flowers this is the one I use probably here I'm painting on the top, so that's why I'm overriding the rain layer. Because I just put a, a layer on the top just for the demo. But you can see that's the type of brush I'm using in, into this scene. This one here is the expressive detail. And uh, it's a brush that you can use for uh, when, when you have something to that needs, you see, this type of uh, line that is discontinued because of a little texture. You can see that this type of brush is probably what I used here on the, on the bottom of the, the rock for a strong contact shadow here like that. So this is the brush I use for the detail. The last brushes on the top, and they have a sort of golden color here, um, are the basic one. And I call them basic because they use some uh, procedural shape. So it's circle for most of them, or oval shape. And you have the airbrush that you can put into a combination with a blending mode and get some light effect. It's something that I use a lot as a post effect, mainly when I end uh, the artwork. You have the filling brush. This one I, I use maybe, maybe more when I uh, fill some basic flat color on a comic, for example. Uh, so it just does a filling of shape, very flat. Uh, as you can expect. This one is just my uh, basic rounded default. 
It has a hard edge with uh, a lot of expression on opacity and a lot of glazing. And it has a tilted shape with a little angle for expressivity, but it's not tilt support. And the last one here, oh no, there is another one after, but this one is just to some details with glazing, but still with the, this type of uh, hard edge shape and very digital. So that's the one I, I use and designed when we made this type of tutorial. You will find the link uh, maybe on the top uh, right of your screen. I will try to put the, the link to this video. It's a full tutorial about this artwork of Kiki, the mascot of Krita in my style. And the last one is a little brush, rounded brush for the detail. So it's a little bit similar than the red one, the red family, because it's a detail brush. But because it was rounded and very digital, you can see that I put it into the golden section on the top. And that's all. I hope you will have fun with the modifying, using these brushes, and you will find this organization that I made that made sense for making more artworks. You will find my work on this social media here, and you can also uh, support my work. Thank you if you do. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye bye.